Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a great week and you're all looking forward to a fantastic weekend. I wish good luck to all of those who are writing their IELTS exams on this weekend. I hope you get nice high band scores. In this lesson, everyone, we are looking at IELTS task one, uh, a map expository essay. This is for the academic IELTS task one, but this is also very useful for the general IELTS. The reason is, is that in the listening section, oftentimes you have to listen to a description of a map and you have to understand directions. So practicing map type questions for the general IELTS can be quite useful for vocabulary and a language. While we wait for some of your peers to join in, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com, that's academicenglishhelp.com. Uh, for more help with the academic IELTS, visit us there. And for the general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have loads and loads of information to help you improve your communication, your English, and your band scores. Welcome, Jai Neil. Good to see members joining into the class. All right, I'll just quickly show you these websites. So this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and it only costs a fraction of um, the official IELTS exam. So it's worth your investment. I've put a discount code even into the chat that you can use. Uh, we are an official British Council IELTS Test Registration Center and certified agents. Hi Bakrat. Hi Amu. Hi June. Hi Jyoti. Nice to see more students joining in. This is our uh, general IELTS website here with the green background. You can use b this big red button to join us uh, there. Again, it's just a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access. Uh, this Sunday, we'll have My IELTS Band 9 Journey, Episode 5. I took the official IELTS exam. We filmed it. Uh, we did a mini-series with this. And Episode 5 will be the inquiry on results. So when students are not happy or candidates are not happy with their marks, they can get a remark. And that's what I'm going to show you this Sunday. Hi, Nick Hill. Hi, Rashika. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help, and you can send me an email if you wish uh, with questions to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, All right, so we have this task one class right now for members. Also, we're streaming now live to our general English help channel. So, uh, Students can join there as well. That will become also a membership for this time. And tomorrow uh, we have speaking part two and speaking part three. So some really good speaking practice coming up tomorrow. Make sure you're there for that. And now let's take a look at this IELTS task one writing question. Again, this is for the academic IELTS, but it's very useful vocabulary, language, and listening for the general IELTS as well because the listening section often includes um, question types that are uh, about maps and you have to identify locations, uh, directions, prepositions. So this will be good for that as well. Hi Paulo. Welcome Vicky. Good to see you there. Um, okay. so. Uh, let's take a look at this. Step one is just to read it really carefully. You have to um, really slow down after the reading section. Start with your task one. Task one should be easier. I actually like these map type questions. I think that um, they're one of the easier task ones as long as you know what you're doing. So here we go, uh, students. You should spend about 20 minutes on this 
task. The maps below show a library in 2000 and now. Uh, describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant. You should write at least 150 words. Uh, the at least part is kind of emphasized and oftentimes what you actually see in the IELTS when you're reading this is the at least is capital. So they write it like this. Okay. Um, when uh, you're writing all uppercase letters, does anybody know what that actually means in, in, in writing, technically speaking, in English? Anybody know? Like, uh, if I write something like this, this is kind of a fun question because sometimes students write emails like this in English and I'm like, whoa, you should not do that. It's not professional. So um, if you write something like, and this is also in the chat, students, even in the live chat. So if you write, please give me the answer, like this, all capital letters, versus writing, uh, please give me the answer. Does anybody know what the actual technical difference is between these? Um, in According to English literature, there is a, a description of what this is and what this is. Okay, Janiel says it's to emphasize something. Um, actually, it's even more than just to emphasize something. Um, when you're writing all capital letters, it means you're shouting. Okay. So you have to really use that carefully. You're right, Janiel, it does emphasize, but technically it means that you're shouting. So if you have a paragraph and let's say one sentence is all in capital letters, it's kind of the same as um, using exclamation marks. And it's like using multiple exclamation marks like that. So it's like, please give me the answer. Um, so it's like you're shouting at your listener, all right? So if you don't intend to shout, don't write all capital letters. Um, yeah, Jainil, absolutely, it can be. So depending on how you use it and where you use it, it could be considered rude behavior, okay? Um, so in this here, when the IELTS writes this, they're actually writing it like this. You should write at least 150 words, okay? So if I'm reading it according to rules of English, this is you should write at least 150 words. Okay, that's how that would be read. Um, which means that that's the absolute minimum. And you need to keep in mind that band seven uh, to nine essays, and this is true for the general IELTS as well, are most often uh, 200 to 200, let's say even 40 words uh, for task one. Okay, so keep that in mind, all right? That's kind of interesting to, to note. All right, no, now let's go back to our question here. So um, here we have our library. And here we have the year 2000. And here we have now, okay? So after you read the question, your next step is to actually look at the diagram and just start to understand what you're looking at here. So in 2000, okay, um, in the upper portion here. Now, we need to have a reference point, obviously, okay? So we need to know which direction. And north, east, south, west is a little bit awkward for something like a library here. Okay, so I wouldn't really use the compass in this case, like north, uh, south, east, west. Okay, so I, I wouldn't use the compass here. I think that's a little bit awkward, not for this type of a map. It's a building, it's not a large building. We don't really have wings like a west wing or an east wing to the building. Um, so we do need a reference point that we're going to be using in our essay where we kind of figure out 
the relative direction. Um, what would be a good reference point here? Okay. Jenny Nidhin, welcome to our group of members. That's great to have you. Uh, Vicky, um, thank you for that super chat donation. That's fantastic. And I'm glad you registered successfully for your exam. Yeah, Nick Hill, very good. So Nick Hill says the reference point should be the entrance. Yeah, um, absolutely, Nick Hill, good eye. And notice how IELTS is trying to help you here a little bit. So they are bringing your attention to this. Notice how this is gray, okay? Everything else, um, there are these white blocks, okay? But the entrance here is uh, gray. So that's your reference point, okay? So this is to the left of the entrance, uh, to the right of the entrance. This is near the entrance. Uh, this is the center of the library. This is the back of the library. So our reference point here is the entrance, okay? It's very important that you identify that reference point, okay? Yeah, Baharat says begin from the entrance. Absolutely. Okay, so we have that reference point, and now we'll be able to orientate our reader clearly based on that reference point. Okay, so when you see something like this for your task one, identify that reference point. All right, um, so now let's just look at some of these main features. These will, this will become uh, valuable information for our essay. Okay. All right, um, so we have our entrance. Um, up to the left of the entrance here, we have this uh, large fiction center, and then we have even some more fiction here. So there's quite a, quite a large part of the library here dedicated to fiction books. And here um, we have, um, of course, a fair bit of change. So we have books dedicated to uh, different uh, genres like art, hobbies, cookery, and then here we have fiction and non-fiction, so those sections have become much smaller, okay? Um, these uh, books here, so these um, uh, subsections here, uh, were in the center of the library or more towards the center, and now we have some tables and seatings with a cafe there, so obviously there's some changes there. Travel remains in the same location, uh, new books remains in the same location, and service desk remains in the same location. Okay, so we've got some movement, we've got some addition uh, to the library, some additional services to the library, so that's what we're going to be focusing on, all right? Now, um, we're not going to get into that much detail at the beginning. That's going to be for the main block or the body paragraph of the essay. The first step that we want to do is we want to begin with the introduction, okay? And the introduction, what is that, members? So what should be included into the introduction? Always, always, no matter what kind of a diagram or um, graph you're looking at, you should always be doing this for the introduction. Okay. The introductory paragraph. So what do we do for that? Mm hmm. Very good, Nick Hill. Very good, Buck. Right? Yeah, we paraphrase the question, right? For those of you who aren't clear, um, we paraphrase the original question and add some more details, okay? So paraphrase the question and add details, okay? Don't forget to add details. There are so many students who just paraphrase the question and they think they've done a great job. Um, yeah, it's okay, but it's not a great job. There's definitely some more detail that you can add. So let's do this together um, and uh, let's uh, compare after to see how we paraphrase. There are lots of different ways to uh, paraphrase the question, okay? All right. 
here we go. So All right, that can be uh, my introduction. So Summit says the maps show changes in the layout of a bookstore um, between 2000 and the present. Uh, Sumit, it's not bad. I think you have a good idea, but just be really careful with information mistakes. This is not a bookstore. It's a library, okay? A library and a bookstore are not the same. And from a library, you borrow books. In a bookstore, you buy books. And the examiners will take marks for information mistakes because they're coherence mistakes. So you have to be careful. June writes, these two blueprints depict the change in the layout of a current library from the millennium, including the rearrangement of the book categories and facilities. June, I think that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, let's put those changes in there. All right, uh, Nick Hill writes, these two pictograms provide the information about the changes in the various sections of a library in the year 2000 and now. Yeah, Nick Hill, I th I'm pretty sure if you give that a second look, you'll figure out that there are ways to paraphrase 2000 and now. Uh, with time, there are always ways to paraphrase time, okay? Uh, time is such a frequent and key part of our daily communication that in just about every language, I'm sure we find lots of ways to paraphrase time and time context, depending on how we want to express it, okay? All right, Jainil says, the two blueprints depict the library and its various sections and services in the year 2000 and at present time. Yeah, so I have something similar. All of those are quite good. So I wrote uh, these blueprints. Um, yeah, and it's, it's good to be even more specific. So uh, let's write how many, right? Let's tell our listener. Uh, think about your reader or your audience as maybe a person who doesn't necessarily see these diagrams, right? And ask yourself, is it still clear? So can a person who doesn't actually see these diagrams uh, understand what I'm explaining to them or exposing to them because it's an expository essay, right? Okay, Bakhrat writes, the blueprint of a map describes the changes that have been done to the layout of a library from 2000 to current in 2021. Um, Bakhrat, you've got a few small mistakes, but I do like how you're using the present perfect because present perfect is used to show change over time. And that's definitely grammar that we want to be using in this essay. It's present perfect because it's change over time from the past to the present. Has everybody recognized that? So has everybody seen that now that we've looked at the question and uh, paraphrased that present perfect is, a, is an absolute essential uh, grammar form in this um, in this map. So, and what kind of present perfect? So we're gonna use present perfect here and uh, there's gonna be a little bit of a more of a twist, okay? So what kind of present perfect are we going to be using at least a couple of times or several times in this essay? If you, Take it one step further. What do you think? Yeah, very good, Nick Hill. Clever, clever, Nick Hill. You're, you've become very, very adept 
um, at English grammar and understanding how and why it's used. Um, yeah, the present perfect passive. So the, so the changes that have been done uh, to the library. And Bakhrad is using that present perfect passive, which is great. Because, of course, we don't know who is the agent of the action. So we don't know who is making or who, which people are making these changes to the library, right? Okay. So now um, we want to uh, create an overview here, okay? Now for the overview, it's a separate paragraph, which is kind of strange. It's just for the IELTS in the real world, especially when you have such a short introduction. Uh, you would probably just have the overview as part of your introductory paragraph, but in the IELTS, it's good to separate these just so that there's a lot of clarity. So in the computer-based exam, leave a space. In the paper-based exam, also skip a line um, between these two paragraphs just for the IELTS. When you get to university, you probably want to combine these. Overview and the introduction are quite synonymous and connected. So uh, for the overview, uh, we want to look at... Um, just kind of the main features. So what you can see by uh, looking at the diagrams at first glance. So don't get really into uh, the specifics yet. Okay. Um, and right away, we can see this big chunk here. So that would be my first glance, first uh, notice. Okay. That's what I would recognize right away. And then um, I would recognize uh, this here and then this here as my number two. Okay. And, and of course, we don't all have to agree here. Um, and then I would probably recognize this um, as my number three. Now, you're not describing this in great detail. You're just describing this as an overview uh, to your reader, okay? All right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to describe this at first glance, and then we're going to compare. And again, for general IELTS students, even though your task one letter writing is quite a bit different than for academic students uh, having a question like this, uh, for general IELTS students, it's still, again, really good practice for vocabulary, uh, description, explanation to practice this kind of map style essay uh, for uh, developing your English communication skills, okay? And there's a very good chance that it will be still very valuable for your listening and potentially your reading section of your IELTS exam or even your speaking section if you have to describe a building um, that has been changed uh, over the past couple decades in your city, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Okay, uh, so I'm going to describe these kind of key features that I see at first glance. That's what the question's asking, right? It says, describe the main features, and that's kind of your overview, right? So I will do that, you do that, and then I'll give you some feedback, and we'll discuss further, right? So here we go.
All right. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. Let's see what you have. Um, Summit says, overall, the layout of the library has uh, been significantly changed, especially on the left-hand side of the room. Um, yeah, the left-hand side of the room is, is okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a number of features have been moved and modified while other facilities have been added. Okay, good. Summit, I like it. That's good. Nice writing. That would definitely get you a good band score. Muguntham, nice to have you contributing. Good for you. Says, overall, the layout of the library um, has changed significantly. Remember your plural and your singular. So library has changed significantly, especially the organization of the categories of books. Okay, and then keep going, Muguntan, so you don't have all the information yet. Okay, there's a little bit more, as you'll see with mine, and Summit also included a bit more. But that's a great start. Uh, students, be really careful with the correct use of has and have, the auxiliary verbs for the uh, present perfect. You do have to have those correct. If you keep making mistakes with those, that's awkward for English, and you will lose scores. So pay attention to that. Okay, Nick Hill writes, overall it is noticeable that the major changes have, that major changes, you don't need to write the Nick Hill, so overall it is noticeable that major changes have been done to the interior layout, especially to the left of the entrance of the library, while there are minor change, changes uh, at the center and back of the library. That's what I would write Nick Hill. So I think if we look at the library... Uh, this would be considered the front because this is closest to the entrance and this would be the back. So usually the front of the library, back of the library. Um, the front of the library has actually remained more or less unchanged with, of course, this slight art fiction section here. Um, but you have to be careful with correct information. Uh, June. Immediately, it is evident that there has been considerable changes in the layout with the addition of a cafe and dining area and the organization of book categories. Um, yeah, very good, June. Okay, that works. Rashika, at first glance, it is clear that there have been lots of alterations that have been done to the left side of the library and uh, some new facilities have been introduced. All right, Rashika, good. Just that one awkward grammar mistake. They're careful. Okay, um, so now uh, we can get into the analysis part. Uh, before we do that, let me read my overview. So uh, at first glance, it is clear that there have been significant alterations uh, to the layout of this library, especially to the organizations, organization of the books and services. Uh, nevertheless, some parts of the library have remained the same over the past 21 years. And of course, as with most of you, uh, I'm also using lots of present perfect already because present perfect really makes sense. And I think that's why IELTS is asking this question, the present and now, because they want to see that present perfect in your writing, okay? All right, Mahadi Mamoom, nice to see you join in on the class, and I'm glad you're enjoying it. All right, so now we get into our analyses, okay? So basically, you don't need to overcomplicate this, so use your overview as your thesis to guide your writing, Okay, that's all you want to do is use your overview as your uh, thesis statement to guide your writing. Simply digress into more details for each of your points in the same order. Okay, so 
Here, um, in my overview, I write, there have been significant alterations to the layout of this library, especially to the organization of the books. So organization of the books is my number one, okay? Organization of the services is going to be my number two, okay? Some parts remaining the same is going to be my number three, all right? So I'm simply going to go into more detail on each of these points in this exact order, all right? Hopefully that makes sense for everyone, okay? All right, so let's do this, let's digress. Digress means to go into further explanation, to go into more depth more detail. That's what the word digress means, okay? Whenever you see new words, students, uh, I'm always trying to throw some new vocabulary at you, whether it's an idiom, a collocation, an expression, or um, some more advanced vocabulary. Make sure to write that down. So in this case, if the word digress, it's an, definitely an academic word, let's say, um, write it down and then keep that in your logs, okay? All right, um, so here I said the organization of the books, right? So organization of the books, we have a large fiction center off to the left of the entrance, reaching all the way to the back of the library. And then we have the nonfiction uh, section to the right of the library uh, near the center of the wall, all right? Now, clearly that has changed and um, these uh, smaller categories of cookery, hobbies, art, have moved from the center of the library, have expanded, while the fiction um, has become significantly smaller. Obviously, um, the people in this locality weren't maybe borrowing them as much, so that section has become much smaller. But don't write that. We don't know why the fiction center has become smaller. Maybe the library has become an education center rather than an entertainment center. So we don't know that. So don't write points that you don't know. Just write what you do know. And then, um, and then describe those, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna do this, you do this, and then we'll compare. So, Okay, and just keep referencing the map as much as you need it. So art, hobbies, cookery. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I can see here that uh, nonfiction moved from the center of the right wall um, to the back portion where fiction used to be, okay?
Okay. There we go. So that is uh, my first point. I'll read it out to you, and I'm guessing you're also typing away, collecting your thoughts, and that's great. So describing the changes in more detail, it is very obvious that the fiction section has become much smaller after renovations. In 2000, this section occupied the entire left side of the library, as well as a portion of the back wall. However, by 2021, let's stick another comma in there because that's still a leading expression of time. Um, this category became much smaller and was joined by the other categories, art, cookery, and hobbies. Okay. Uh, to the left of the entrance. Yeah. Furthermore, nonfiction novels have been relocated from the left center wall to the back right corner where more fiction books were uh, formerly housed. Housed formerly is okay, but I like formerly housed a bit more. All right, so there we go. All right, June writes, in more detail, the left-hand side of the entrance was completely occupied by fiction uh, books in 2000. However, this section has shrunk with the supplement of books uh, on hobbies, cooking, um, and art over the course of almost two decades. Uh, careful, yeah, June, it's good writing. Uh, just careful with course of almost two decades. It's not course of almost two decades. It is two decades. So 2000 to 2021 is actually just one year over two decades. So be really careful with information mistakes, okay? Uh, Nick Hill, Right, at deeper inspection to the lip, uh, at deeper inspection, comma, Nick Hill, it's your leading expression. Uh, to the left side of the entry in 2000, the L shaped fiction section has been diminished after renovations. Nevertheless, after 21 years, it has categorized, it has been categorized because, again, it's passive, Nick Hill. So other people are doing the categorizing with the other. Uh, uh, types of books, okay? So it has been categorized with other sections, art, cookery, hobbies, and hobbies to the left of the library. Moreover, the nonfiction books have been moved from the right center of the entry to the back of the library. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Speaking World is asking, having a first glance, it can be seen that... Um, speaking word world, having a first glance, it can be seen that is wordy. Okay. That's why I wouldn't write something like that. So the question that's being asked on our general English, and I've seen this, so it's a good question. I'll address it. Um, is, is it okay to write this? Yes, but it's not good writing. It's not considered band seven, eight, nine. So having, um, a first glance. it can be seen that. Okay, so this is not considered uh, a high band writing. Because it's wordy and redundant. So having a first glance is almost the same as saying it can be seen that. So basically you're just repeating yourself IELTS examiners, and you can imagine when they're marking hundreds and hundreds of essays, they don't like to see writing where they feel like the student is trying to fill um, words. So they're trying to reach the 150 or 200 word count by filling unnecessary words. You will actually lose marks for that. In that case, it's just better to write less words, but better quality. Okay. So I hope that makes sense for everybody. Right. Mugunthan writes, while in the past the library had a large portion of books on fiction, after renovations, this section has become more or less equal. Um, it's not more or less equal, Mugunthan. It's clearly less. 
So again, information mistakes, be careful about that. More or less equal, no way. I mean, look at how small fiction is here and look at how huge it is here. Uh, if you wrote that, it's almost like the examiner will drop you a mark just for that right away. So it's not more or less equal, okay? It's different. Uh, the left side of the library where fiction books are placed in 2000 is now divided into more categories, giving space to other books. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, I mean, giving space to other books, uh, it's not actually true. Again, Mugunthan, because they're not doing that to give space to more books. They were actually doing that to give space to uh, the tables, the seating, and the cafe. So again, Mugunthan, you have really good English. You have really good grammar and vocabulary, but you're going to be losing your marks on coherence and information. And that's especially important for band seven, eight, nine. So, um, you know, if you wrote that, I think you'd be very surprised if you got back a band six or 6.5 for your mark, but that's what you would get. And I'm sure you'd be shocked. You'd be like, why did I just get that? I know I have good English. I know I have good vocabulary. And the reason why is because you're making too many information mistakes, okay? I'm just being very, very honest with you here. So you have to be really careful not to do that because that's so sad when I can see that a student has high English, but they're also marking your communication. So be really careful, okay? All right, thumbs up, yeah? Pay attention to that, Mugunthan, all right? So I would actually write something like this. The reduction of uh, the fiction uh, book section and the relocation of the other sections has given space for the introduction of a cafe to where the non-fiction books uh, were found in 2000 and three tables and seating to where the interest books were located originally. Okay, so um, that's what you want to write, okay? So furthermore, non, uh, sorry, um, the reduction of the fiction book section and the relocation of the other sections has given space for the introduction of a cafe to where the nonfiction books were found in 2000 and to three tables in seating to uh, where the interest books were located originally. I might even give a little bit more help for my reader here to the center of the library where the interest books were located originally. I should say originally located. It just reads a bit better. Okay, so now again, going back, I've basically uh, described the first two points of my overview. Okay, so the organization of the books and the services, the changes there. All right, now I have one more part to go. Uh, the part that has remained the same over the past 21 years. And that part, okay, are the travel books, the new books, and the service desk. All right. So, nevertheless, Uh, three parts of the library have remained 
the same. Uh, the travel books. New books. And service desk. have stayed near the entrance to the front and front right of the library. I'm going to go with the venue instead of the library, all right? Okay, and that finishes uh, this essay. Now, I'm good here, so this is good. If I'm really fast at writing and I've already had a chance to review, uh, then I'll write a summary. But before I write the summary, it's really important to review students. That's where I made a big mistake on my official IELTS exam is I didn't actually spend enough time reviewing for spelling mistakes, maybe some missed grammar. And I think that's definitely where I probably lost about a whole band score. So I'll do that differently the next time that I attempt my IELTS exam. So I highly, highly recommend that uh, you spend at least a couple of minutes reviewing your work before you move on to task two, okay? So at this point in the real exam, what I would do is I would read this, and it's the same for general IELTS as well. When you're writing a letter or an email, quote unquote, uh, you need to review it before you move to task two. So here we go. These two blueprints depict the various sections and services of a library at the turn of the millennium and current in 2021 with notable changes. And see, right away, I can see that this is an additive clause, so I need another comma here, okay? And it's bad to have mistakes, even small ones like that in the introduction. At first glance, it is clear that there have been significant alterations to the layout of this library, especially to the organization of the books and services. Nevertheless, some parts of the library have remained the same over the past 21 years. Describing the changes in more detail, it is very obvious that the fiction section has become much smaller after renovations. In 2000, this section occupied the entire left of the library as well as a portion of the back wall. However, by 2021, this category became much smaller and was joined by the other categories, art, cookery, and hobbies, to the left of the entrance. Furthermore, nonfiction novels have been relocated from the left center wall to the back right corner where more fiction books were formerly housed. The reduction of the fiction book section and the relocation of the other sections has given space for the introduction of a cafe to where the non-fiction books were found in 2000 and three tables and seatings to the center of the library where the interest books were originally located. Okay. And I have a missing comma here. Nevertheless, three parts of the library have remained the same. The travel books, new books, and service desk have stayed near the entrance to the front and front right of the venue. Okay. Um, in summary, much of this library has been altered to provide um, visitors uh, to sit and enjoy um, a beverage while browsing 
and reading books. Okay, so that's my summary because after all of this analysis, if I want to really be like, okay, I want to be a five-star university level band nine student, I'm going to give some valuable information that I can figure out by looking at this. And clearly when we look at this diagram, hopefully everybody sees that the primary reason for the changes is really to add this service. Okay, uh, probably over the years, we don't know this, so don't write this, but probably over the years, libraries realize that having a cafe in the library is extremely valuable um, to keep your visitors there, to keep them interested, which is ironic because this is actually true in the real world. Uh, libraries 20, 30 years ago were very strict about not having any food or drink in the library. But because of computers and the internet and all the information being on the internet, now <laughs> libraries have a challenge to stay open, to, st to keep people in the library, to keep them interested. So having a cafe where people can kind of enjoy their warm cup of joe with their book becomes essential. So that's kind of an interesting thought for you. Uh, to close this lesson. Okay, I do see that there is some more good writing coming from Rashika and from June as well. Okay, uh, Magunthan, semicolons, punctuations, please visit the blog on our website. So students, uh, for more details on writing, especially concepts like um, punctuation, commas, semicolon, period, uh, visit aehelp.com, look at the blog search for punctuation. Same thing with gialtshelp.com for general IELTS students, all right? Uh, that's it for this class, everyone. I will be back in about 30 minutes where we will finish task two essay that we started yesterday. If you missed it, don't worry because we will review the question and the introductory paragraph before we write the body paragraphs and the conclusion. That's coming up next class. Um, this is uh, aehelp.com and generalisleshelp.com, aehelp.com. Click this big red button to join our premium package. And for the general IELTS, click this big red button here to join our premium package there. I'll be back in 30 minutes. See you soon, everyone. Have a lovely break and then come back and join me for some more writing. I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria for now. Bye.